Father, I want to thank you for this moment you've given unto us that we can even come before you and give you all the glory and realize that you are God, we are your children. You are the shepherd, Father, we are the flock. You are the creator, Father, we are the creation. And we are here, Father, lifting our, up, our eyes to you and saying thank you for the wonderful things you've done for us. We want to thank you for the wonderful gift of your word. It is by your word you've kept us. It is by your word you've been guiding us. It is by your word that you promise us that it's going to be well, no matter what we go through. Father, we ask you to continue blessing every one of us. To continue, my Father, complete, perfecting everything that concerns every one of us. And Father, even as you're about to hear your word, may you come and speak to us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray and believe. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Today being the day of thanksgiving, today we are going to talk about giving thanks to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Because God delights when we give thanks to Him. God delights when you praise Him. Psalms 22 verse number 3 says, God inhibits in the praises of His children. Wherever God is found, His presence comes down. Hallelujah. That's how we can be able to invoke the presence of God when we can learn to come before God with thanksgiving. I want us to open our Bibles in the book of First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 18. He says, in everything, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God. All of us want to know the will of God. Because you can never be able to please God if you don't know His will. We all, every day we live in, we want to be in the will of God. Because being in the will of God, that's why you get satisfaction. That's why you get peace. That's why you get the grace you need. And now God is making us know that in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. He didn't say in some things. But in everything. But he didn't say for everything. In everything but not for everything. Because you can't give God thanks because somebody died. You can't give thanks because you are feeling pain. You can't give thanks because you are disappointed. But in the midst of your disappointment. In the midst of mourning. In the midst of winter. In the midst of the battle. You still have to give thanks. In everything. In every situation. Whether it is cold, whether it is hot. Whether it is in the night, whether it is in the day. Whether it, is, whether it is in good times, whether it is in bad times. In everything you give thanks. Whether you are on the mountain, whether you are in the valley. Whether there are some mountains before you which they don't seem to, that God wants to move them. Still in everything you say, give thanks because this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You remember the story about Job when God talked about Job and said there's no one like him. In all things he fears God, in all things he acknowledged that God is God. And the devil said or he came to accuse and say he only thanks you or he only serves you because there are good things in his life. He's blessed. He has a wonderful wife. He's rich. He's respected in the community. He has so many children. He's blessed in every way. That's why he thanks you. That's why he praises you. And, the devil, and God told the devil, no. You can do whatever you want to do. Take away all the things. Do whatever you want to do. And see that you can never shake the praise of Job. You can never shake his faith in me. And therefore the devil went out and destroyed everything. In one day, he lost everything. From children, even to the property, to everything in one day. And what did Job say? 
Did they stand there and cast God? No, he said, naked I came. Naked I'll go. God will give you praise. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. As long as he had the breath of life, he said that I'm going to thank the Lord. The God who gave me these things, he can still give me more things. Hallelujah. It is God who gave me and still God can be able to give me. Hallelujah. There is something that the devil cannot be able to destroy. Your relationship with God if you are determined to continue praising God. Hallelujah. That nothing is going to enter. I'm not praising God because I'm in good times. I'm not thanking God just because I have a family. If you didn't have a family, will you thank God? If you are not married, will you thank God? If you're, if you're still in the other side of the continent, will you thank God? I'm not thanking God because that I've got these things. God needs to be thanked because He's God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Just because He is God, He don't change. He deserves to be thanked. Hallelujah. You don't give him anything, but he has given you the gift of life. You don't need to pay for the air you breathe in. God has given you all these things. So we need even to come to that place where we appreciate God in everything, no matter what you're going through. Don't let the devil tell you, can you still say thank you to God? After all, after what you've gone through, after what you're going through this moment, you're trying everything, nothing is working. You account everything is bouncing. Nothing stands there. Still, you can thank God in everything. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because he said, this is the will of God for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. He deserves our thanksgiving. I want us to go to the book of Psalms 100. Psalms 100. We can start from verse number 1 going down, but our emphasis will be 4 and 5. Mm. Amen. He says, make a joyful noise. Make a joyful shout to the Lord all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Gladness and thankfulness go together. You can never find somebody who is not thankful being glad. Because you are thankful, because you are glad, because you know God has done something for you. Hallelujah. But somebody who doesn't see anything that God has done for them, they can never be glad. They can never serve God with gladness. They'll serve God with murmuring. They'll serve God with complaining. They'll serve God with dragging their feet because they don't have gladness in them. They don't appreciate what God has done for them. But he says, serve God with gladness. Be glad that even you can be able to serve God. Amen. Know that wherever you are this moment is a prayer of somebody. Amen. Somebody saying, if only I can walk. If only I can just sit down and no pain in my body. If only I can just feel okay one more time. So you need to be glad wherever you are because he's a miracle. Hallelujah. He's a blessing. Though you're not content wherever you are, somebody say, if only I can be in Europe. They're dying in the sea. But you're there. Hallelujah. So serve God with gladness. Find something that will make you to be glad because God has been good to you and serve Him with gladness. Don't look around. When you look around, you'll be able to serve God with gladness because now you'll be comparing yourself with other people. God, if you really love me, I go to church, but these people, they don't go to church. Everything, look as Sieg is going well. They get whatever they want to get. They get whoever, whomever they want to get. If they say they are going to be married today, they are going to be married today. But God, me, I serve you. Why is my blessing? Don't compare yourself with anyone else. You'll be glad. But when you look at your own race, hallelujah. You don't know what they go through. You don't know what they pay. You don't know what they're suffering. But God has given you peace. God has given you grace. You even don't know when they go to sleep, whether they sleep. Be glad that you know God. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with sin. Don't come complaining and mama. God, I've come again. No, come before Him. Say, God, I praise Your name. Hallelujah. I thank You that I can come before Your presence. I thank You because You are God who can do all things. I'm lifting up my eyes unto You, Jehovah God. There are those even they don't know where to lift up their eyes to. They lift their eyes to men and men disappointment. But you can lift your eyes unto the one that is so great. Hallelujah. Glory 
to God. Verse number three. Know that the Lord, He is God. Mm. You know, anyone you give the type of title of God means that He's all knowing, He's all ever present, and He's all powerful. Hallelujah. So know that He is God. Amen. Amen. And that it is He who made us, not we ourselves. Verse number four, very important. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Come before the presence of God with thanksgiving. Come before the presence of God with praises. Come before the presence of God thanking God for his goodness. Hallelujah. Don't enter the courts of God or the presence of God with murmuring. With the pity party spirit, why me God? Why me? Why always me? Why is it always like, no, come before his presence just thanking him because he's a great God and he deserves all the glory. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good and his mercies endures, his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generation. Hallelujah. It is good to come before the presence of God and thank God. We have every reason, as we say, to thank the Lord because Psalm 150 say, Let everything that has breath. If at all you have the breath, you can breathe in, you can breathe out. Thank the Lord. Amen. There are people in, we know in the hospitals, they can't breathe in by themselves. They need a machine. They need something to help them. But you can breathe in, you can breathe out. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Glory to God. We can only be able to come to this place. We can only be able to come to this place where we know God is God. When we have a spirit of contentment. Contentment means that yes, I'm believing God for greater things, but in the place I am, I'm still satisfied. Amen. In the place I am, I'm still complete. Amen. Because there's nothing that God will hinder or keep away from you if you need it to live it today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need something desperate today for you to live, God will give it to you. That's why the Bible says, God shall supply my need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. When it becomes a need, not a want, then God will supply it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So wherever we are, yes, we have wants, we have desires, but even this moment, we must acknowledge that in this place, we are blessed. Amen. I want us to go to the book of First Timothy chapter 6. From verse number 6. He says, Now godliness, godliness with contentment is a great gain. For you brought nothing into this world and it is certain you will carry nothing out. Amen. So having food and clothing for these we shall be. Having food, having clothing, we shall be satisfied. That's why we need to bless the Lord. You have a roof over your head. You have food before you on your table. You have clothes to put on. Hallelujah. You have hope. These are enough even to make us to give thanks, to be grateful to our God. There are people that don't have those things. There are so many things we take for granted. Many things we take they must be there. But until you miss them, until you don't have them, that's when you realize it was a blessing. You feed yourself, you do everything for yourself, you take it for granted. There are those they need everyone to put everything on them. Let us not take anything for granted. Let us be grateful for everything that the Lord has done for us. If you can't be grateful in what you have now, you can never be grateful in a lot. If you can't be grateful in small things, You'll never be grateful even in great things. I heard about this story about this man. He was speaking to God and saying, God, if only you had blessed me with two cows, I'll give you one because of being thankful. But you see, God, I don't have cows. 
God, he had, he had given me two goats. <laughs> I'll be so happy and I'll give you one back. <laughs> the man had a chicken. Two chickens. And God said, but you have two chickens. He said, but you see, I need this and this. And they only give me two eggs. <laughs> you can't with me. So you can never be grateful. If, if you're not grateful where you are, you can never be grateful anywhere else. God, if only I'd be married, I'd be grateful. If you're not grateful, even when you're single, even when you're married, you'll be grateful. God, if you could win, even I become rich, if you are not grateful where you are, you can never be grateful anywhere. We need to be learned to be grateful wherever we are. Amen. Don't wait until I have everything. That's when I'll thank God. No. If you cannot thank God, even without nothing, even when you have everything, you can never thank God. Because you don't have that heart of appreciating. You must learn to appreciate wherever you are and whatever you have because it could be worse. It could be different. So learn to thank God wherever you are, even in those small things that you have. I know there are times when you don't feel like thanking God. I know there are times that's because we're in the flesh and yet God has called us to live in the spirit. And David was in this place when he wrote Psalm 103. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul. Because the flesh did not want to bless. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not his benefits. Most of the things we hold on to, they are benefits. Amen. Because there are people who don't have them, and they still believe in God, and they still love God. There are people even they don't have, or they are not where you are. But they still praise God. So whatever you have is a benefit. So bless the Lord, oh my soul. Don't forget the benefit. You've been forgiven all, all your sins. You are not in any kind of bondage. There are people in bondage. They wish they could sp stop smoking, drinking, stop all these kind of things. But they can't. You, you don't do it. You, feel like you, you take for granted. No. It's a benefit. He has forgiven you all your sins. He has healed you all your sickness. He has done great things for you. You have parents. You have people who love you around you. You have all these things. All these are benefits. So bless the Lord. Don't forget these benefits. You can go to work. Hallelujah. You can come back homely. You, home. you can enjoy your, whatever you've been earning. It's a benefit. It's not by your power. It's not by your might. It's not by your skills. It's not by your connection. It's not because of anything of the family you're born in. It's because of the goodness of our God. Amen. So bless the Lord and don't forget. Don't allow the enemy make you to forget the benefit of wherever you are. Hallelujah. Yeah. Most of us, I know we've come from a place and when you look back where you came from, most of your friends, they are dead. Most of your friends, they died even without ever seeing good. But God has made you to see so many good. Therefore, thank the Lord. This is a benefit that God has given unto you. Hallelujah. Let's learn to thank God. Jesus is our example. We call ourselves Christians. Jesus, we don't ever see Jesus complaining. We never see Jesus murmuring. Though sometimes he was faced with so big task but still he never complained you remember the time he had to feed 5,000 people, over 5,000 people there was no food around there was no restaurant, there was no nothing only they had, they had 5 loaves and 2 fish and everybody was hungry what did Jesus do? he took the bread he took the fish, he looked in heaven he didn't complain he said, Father thank you Amen it was small, but it thanked God, and it was multiplied. And it fed 5,000, not only just giving them something to buy, the Bible says they ate, they were full, and they left some over. Twelve baskets full. And I'm sure some women carried. It's normal. But even after carrying, they left twelve baskets. Hallelujah! Just on the way, when my baby will be deciding, yeah, I'm giving this one. But when he was confronted with that, he never complained. He took the little break down. So don't complain when you have little. Mm. Don't say, this is too small. Mm. Say, God, I thank you when I have this one. Hallelujah. I thank you that I, I, you've given me this one. I know you can be able to do something. Hallelujah. Mm. Start by thanking. Not by complaining. Say, God, now what is this? <laughs> I have so many people to feed. 
have so many things to do. I need so much money. What is, what is this in comparison to? No, say just thank you God. I have this. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know you are going to provide. Another case, Jesus. He came to the tomb. The tomb of Lazarus. They had called him. Lazarus was dying. He was sick. He died. He was buried. Four days later, he comes. And he said, where have you laid him? He went there. When he stood before the, gre the grave, he lifted up his eyes and said, Father, thank you because you always hear me. Amen. We don't see him complaining. We see him all the time thanking God because he knew that God was in control. He knew that God can change all things. When we thank the Lord, then God comes in and brings a miracle and does something. But when you complain, God cannot come in a place where people are complaining, murmuring. God cannot be able to work with people who are discouraged, they are about to give up. God will work with those people who know He can be able to do it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There's, a thing, there's a story that happened in the book of Luke. I want us to go there. Luke 17. Luke 17. From verse number 11. It says, now it, came, now it happened, as he went to Jerusalem, he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. According to the law, they were not supposed to come near, because they were unclean, because the leprosy was contagious. These people, when they suffered this, this sickness, they were cast away even from their family. Your mother, your parents, we people you know, they'll throw you out because you have leprosy. There were people who are dislike, dislike. You can imagine even the state of your mind, how they were feeling, stigma, and all the kind of rejection. Now they see Jesus from afar, they cry, Jesus, have mercy on us. So then he saw them, when he saw them, he said to them, Go. Show yourself to the priest. So it was that as they went, they were cleansed, they were healed. As they were going. Amen. As they were going. That's how sometimes God does the miracle. There are some miracles that you want God to do in the, in the image, but there's some miracle that God, God, God does as you're obeying the word of God. As you're obeying, as you're thanking God, as you're moving according to the word of God, then a miracle happens. He could have told them, be cleansed, but he told them, go and show. If they say, no, who, he, we are not going to go, they'll have cut short their miracle. But as they were going to show themselves, you're only supposed to go to show yourself when you're healed. Because it's the priest to declare you are clean. Mm -hmm. Now you just told them, go and show yourself, and they go in faith. Amen. And as they're going in faith, they didn't doubt, but by the way, where are we going? No, they just went. And as they were going, they became cleansed. Hallelujah. Amen. And one of them, one of them, <laughs> there were ten, when he saw that he was healed, he returned with a loud voice, glorified God, and fell down on his face, uh, his face on his feet, and giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. He was not even from the family of Israel. He was, you can call him like he was an unbeliever. So when Jesus, and so Jesus answered and said, Were they not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? You see, when you return to give thanks to God, you are giving glory. When you don't give thanks, you are saying, It is by my power. It is by my strength. You want men to praise you. You want men to say, hey, you are so wise. How did you come out? Hey. You want them to, you, you want to take the glory of God. But you say, no, no, it's not about me. It's about him. I thank God. I justify God has done it for me. You are giving glory to God. Every time you give thanks, you are giving glory to God. Amen. And when you give glory to God, God showers you with more blessing. Because God says, I'm not going to share my glory with no one. 
Don't take glory for what God deserves the glory. Because you know it is not by your power, it is not by your strength, it is by His grace, it is by His enablement. So give Him glory. Say, there were no other people who came to give glory to God. How we fail to give glory to God. When God gives us the opportunity that we can worship Him and glorify His name. Save only this man and he said to him, arise your way, your faith has made you whole. Hmm. This man was not only cleansed, this man was made whole. He was made well. The other people that were healed, don't, there's no doubt about it. But there's a blessing this man got that the others could not get. They were made whole. God wanted to be whole. He, those people, they were only healed their physical, but maybe their spiritual, they, every other part of their life was not healed. There's a, there's a blessing we get. We become whole when you learn to thank God. The need which God wanted God to meet, He meets it and it goes beyond. You become complete. Amen. That that problem will never come back again. Not mentally, not spiritual, not psychological, not everything. Everything becomes well. This man was made whole. I want to be made whole. Giving thanks makes you to be whole. Amen. That's why you find your family, there's peace. Oh, there is joy. Oh, there is grace. And God makes it to be whole. Hallelujah. Because you know that you learn to give thanks. You become whole. You become complete. You, you receive all the blessings because God knows that He's going to get all the glory from you. But only one man came out of ten. No wonder we, have this, we hear this story about this man who had a vision in the night. God took him to heaven. And in heaven... He was taken to different rooms. He came to one room, there were angels, they were so busy receiving posts. There were letters, they were see they were receiving, putting them together. They were so busy. He went to another room. Also they were busy sending them back, sending them back. Send, and then he came to another room, there was only one angel. He had no work. And he said, Lord, I don't understand what is happening here. He said, you know the first time, the first room we went, that is the room where the angels receive prayers. They come in bags. They come, they are busy. They, they, they don't take pause. They are so busy. The letters are so many. And the second room is where now they are being sent. The answers, they are sent. And also they are very busy because God is always sending back your answers. But the third room is the room for receiving thanksgiving. There is no letter that comes. We don't remember to thank the Lord. We only remember to cry when there's trouble. But even everything is well, you forget where God has taken you from. But let's turn, let's learn to come back and say, God, thank you. When you're in trouble, nobody reminds you to pray for that thing. But when it is done, now you need to be reminded. You remember you prayed? Okay. No, you don't need to be reminded. Hallelujah. Because you know what God did when you were afflicted, when you're in pain, when things were working so hard on your life, but you called unto God. Amen. Amen. There is something that giving thanks also helps us in, and that is in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse number 6. He says, Be anxious, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Amen. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart, mind, through Christ Jesus. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer, supplication, together with thanksgiving. When you're about to be anxious, when you learn to give thanks, anxiety will cease. Hallelujah. Because God will be able to reveal to you that whatever you have, wherever you are, is a blessing. And it's not by your power you brought yourself there. It is only by His grace. Hallelujah. So you can't be anxious because you know God is in control. And God is going to 
give you the desires of your heart when you pray according to his word. And when you pray and God gives you, you are going still to come back and thank God and God is going to make you whole. The Bible tells us in, about the story about the children of Israel, why God rejected them. Because they were always complaining. They were always murmuring. There is nothing they came before God and said, God, we thank you for the manna, but now we want meat. No, they were saying, what is this now, manna? <laughs> what is this? We, miss, we want fish. They, you know, they were telling God all kinds of things they wanted, and they didn't, they didn't know they were in the wilderness. They wanted to live in the wilderness as if they were in Egypt. And therefore they failed to acknowledge that God was God. So they asked for meat. But the Bible says that God gave them whatever they wanted, but there was leanness sent with it. You can imagine, you have whatever you thought that you wanted or complain about, but once you receive it, it's not as satisfying as you thought it's going to be satisfying. It's not as fulfilling as you thought it's going to be fulfilling because you failed to be thankful to God. There's no blessing in it. You can get it, but you don't get the benefit of it. There's leanness on it. But when you learn to thank the Lord, whatever God blesses you, the Bible says the blessings of God, they'll make you, and there'll be no sorrow. Hallelujah. I don't want that blessing because you've complained and murmured.